you see I already have added in data for U.S. population by decade from 1900 to 1980, and the U.S. population data is in millions, and I want to project three decades beyond what my data points are. So for 1900 to 1980 are my data points, why well, I want to then project 1990, 2000, and 2010. The easiest way to do this is, first of all, I'm going to create a line chart, highlight the data that you want to forecast, come up to insert, and then just create a simple line chart. Now at this point we could modify the line chart by adding titles and so, so on, but we'll just uh, hold off on that at this point. Except for one thing that I do want to change before we move on. You'll notice here that the labels we have along the bottom for the x-axis are numerical values, the first data point, the second, up to the nine data points. Well, I'd like to see instead the actual years be reported there. So all we need to do is make sure then the, high, the, the chart has been selected. When it does, the Chart Tools tabs will come up. Click on the Design Tool tab, come over to Select Data. And what we're going to do is edit the horizontal axis label by clicking on this Edit button. Now when I do that, I want to click this up arrow key. And now I can go and click on Drag, click and drag where my value labels are for the x-axis. Click back on this tab, click OK, click OK once again, and now it's added then the decade labels to my line. To generate a trend extrapolation using just a line, click, click on the actual line itself. When it's selected, right mouse button click and come to Add Trend Line. And here there are a variety of different trend lines we can add. We're just going to go with a straight linear trend extrapolation. We're going to come down here to forward. And I'm going to add in three periods. It's going to go three data points beyond what we have data for. And since our data are every decade, it's going to then generate a forecast for three decades beyond 1980. I'm going to go ahead and you'll notice it's already placed a line here. And so I'm going to close that so you can see the line that's been forecasted. And that's the trend extrapolation. Now what I can do also though is to click on that trend line, right mouse button, and I'm going to format it. And here's where we can go and change the actual color of the line if we wish. Let's say we want to make it a deep red. I'm going to make it also then a dash type of line instead of the small dots. Close it and you see then the actual line has changed. But we also may want to know what the line is, what the intercept, slope, and even the R-square value, how well the data are explained by the line. So make sure then you go ahead and click to highlight that trend line. Right mouse button to open up your options. Come back to format trend line again. And now we're going to scroll down here and we're going to click on the display equation on chart and also display the R square value on the chart and close that. And so I can click and drag this a little off the line so I can read it better. And here I can you know, highlight this and change the font size and so on, even the color of the font if I wish. But this is going to be the trend line. Now typically what we do is we'll say y equals the intercept, which is 51, plus 18.267 times x. So that's the line that we have here. That means then that for every decade, every one period, which our periods here are in, in decades, for every one decade, we see then the populations expect to increase by about 18.3 million. And the R square indicates that we're explaining about 97% of the total variation in population variation across these nine decades that we have data for. Now you notice though, the labels do not exist down here for 1990, 2000, and 2010. So I want to add those labels as well. So click on the chart. That'll open up the chart tabs. Click on the design tab. We'll come back to select data again. And again, I'm going to click on the Edit Horizontal Axis Labels. Click on the up arrow key. Now we're able to click and drag to highlight the range where it has the cells that have the labels that we want. I'm going to click and drag again to highlight 
the data points we do have, 1900 to 1980. I've let go then of the cursor at this point. Now I'm going to come and before I select 1990, I'm going to hold down the control key and now left mouse button click and drag. And I'll click back on this icon, click the OK button, and one more time on the OK button. And now it's added in then the value labels for 1990 and 2000 and 2010. So that's how we can then generate a trend extrapolation on a chart and also display the formula and the R squared value. So well, we now have been able to add the projected linear trend extrapolation to the line graph of the actual data and even generated the line that we see, y equals 18.267x plus 51. We don't know what the precise values were are projected based upon this line. So let me first of all delete this graph since we may now want to show it on the chart that we present. But now what I'm going to do is show you how to use functions in Excel to generate the precise values for projecting. So what I'm going to do is first of all create this new column which is going to be index and this is going to serve as my data points for X 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 which data point it is. Then in that case if we actually had data for 1990, 2000, 2010 those would be data points 10, 11, and 12. So that's going to serve as my X variable instead of the actual year. What I'm going to do is select the first cell which I want to make a projection to, equal, and we'll use the trend function. And the first thing it tells us to do is select the known Y's, what we want to forecast, comma, the known X's, and that's going to be the index variable that we've created here, comma, and then what the new X is going to be. And so I want to forecast the information for uh, case number 10 in our data set. Close parenthesis and hit return. And it projects then based upon this line that for 1990, the population would be about 233.7 million. I can do the same thing then for this next cell equals trend once I click into it. Highlight the known Y's comma the X's that we're using, the new X, close parenthesis and hit return. So for 2000, it's projected that the population would be about 252 million. And I'll do the same thing in this last cell. Equal trend, select the known data points for Y, comma, the values for X, comma, and what the new X value will be close parenthesis and hit return. And there it projects it's going to be 270.2 million. That's how we can then enter in this trend function one cell at a time for each of these. But if we have a large number of different um, forecasts we want to make, let's say we want to uh, again just um, make forecasts for 1990 to 2000, we can enter the formula just once as an array formula. To do so, click in the first cell the range where you want the projected values to be shown and highlight the whole range where you want the projected values to be displayed. Now type in equal, let's type in trend which is our function, open parenthesis, click and drag to highlight the y's, comma, click and tra uh, to drag and highlight the x values of known data points. And now I'm going to click and drag the range of the new X's and close parenthesis. Now I don't hit return. Our tendency is to hit return right at the end of that line. But because it's an array formula, it's going to be entered into all three cells at one time. So before I hit return, I want to press down and hold the control and the shift keys. And while those, the control and the shift keys are being held down, I want to hit the enter key. And you notice it has placed the formula 
into all three cells at once. And if we go up to the top where we see the formula bar, you notice that before I clicked on it, whoops, you see here then the function is in brackets and those brackets indicate it is an array formula. So we can't modify just one cell here at a time. The only thing I can do is to delete that entire array. I would need to then highlight the entire range and delete. But that's how we can enter that formula in just once as an array. Now I also though may want to display what the actual value of the intercept and the slope and the R square is for this linear trend line. And we're going to use the intercept function to generate the intercept. This reports the intercept for a linear regression line. So equal intercept, open parenthesis, select the known y's, what we want to forecast, comma, and the x, that's the index variables for the data points that we have values for. Close parenthesis and hit return, and there it's 51. We can also then generate the slope with the slope function. Open parenthesis, again, highlight the y's, comma, and the x variable. Hit return after you've selected then the close parenthesis. And there we see the slope of 18.27. And I can make this a little bit smaller. That would make a little, little nice 18.3 we'll round off. And also I can generate the R square value by equal using the equal RSQ, the R square function. Open parenthesis, select the known Y's, and the index for the known Y's would be the X variable. Close parenthesis, we get the R square of 0.975 that we reported before in the line, just using the trend line. So that's how we can then generate the trend line and also use Excel functions of trend, intercept, slope, and RSQ to generate information about the regression line.